Adobe Lightroom is an amazing piece of software. However, it actually has a ton of hidden features that most users do not know about. And that is why in this video, I'm going to be talking about five hidden secrets that you do not know in Lightroom. So the first secret we're going to be covering is subtracting the sky from the sky. Now, I'm sure most of you are aware of Lightroom's masking panel over here. If I open this up, create a new mask and select the sky, you can see it does a pretty good job. However, if I start to zoom in really close here, you can actually see the mask has bled through into parts of the landscape. Let me just turn this off and then on and off and then on. And you can see different parts of the landscape actually have some of that mask applied to it. Now, I actually believe that this is intentional on Adobe's part. I believe that they do this so that if you make tonal adjustments or adjustments to the color of the sky, it more seamlessly blends into the landscape. However, if you want to select the landscape, the inverse is true. If I come up here and click on invert to invert my selection, then you can also see now the opposite is taking effect. We have the landscape selected, but also sections of the sky are selected that we don't necessarily want to be. So in order to fix this is we can just go over to subtract and hit sky again. And then we can see that we have a very clean selection. And if you decide you don't want the feathering in the initial sky selection, all you have to do is intersect that sky selection with another sky selection. Let's go up to create new mask and then go down to select sky. Once that's completed, we then click on these three dots and then say intersect mask with and select the sky again. Now you can watch how that feathering is completely gone and we have a nice and clean sky selection. Hidden tool number two is the mid tone exposure slider. This works best in images that are already high contrast where increasing the exposure slider would quickly push the highlights and blow them out. Instead of doing that, we are going to go down to color grading. And then you'll see underneath midtones, we have a color grading wheel to create a color grade. But below that, we actually have a slider which controls the luminance or the exposure of just the midtones. And from here, you can watch for the histogram that only the midtones are affected when I control this slider. Oftentimes when editing photos, I'm doing so in the middle of the night when the brightest thing in front of me is the computer monitor. Now doing so will oftentimes lead you to thinking the photo looks good until you come back at it the next day and realize that something looks wrong. So a great way to fix this is to simply right click on the background and then we can actually change the background color from white to light gray down to medium gray, dark gray, darker gray, and even all the way to black. This is something I use all the time and toggling back and forth between white and black to make sure my photo still looks good and I did not over or underexpose it. This is especially useful before sending off a photo to be printed. So the next tricks I'm going to be talking about are the before and after key and the comparison tool. It is very common when you're editing a photograph to get fatigued on that and then accidentally go overboard when you're editing. So that is why very frequently when I'm editing photos in Lightroom, I hit the backslash key to see the before and the after. While I am in the develop module, if I hit the backslash key, it will actually give me a before preview of where I started out with without resetting everything to its original settings. And all I have to do is hit that backslash key again in order to go to where I am currently at. Sometimes though, this isn't enough. And when I want to see a comparison between the unedited and the edited version, I go down here to the bottom left and click on this, which is the comparison tool. Clicking it once gives me a side-by-side -side comparison. On the left, you have the before, and on the right, you have the after. Clicking it again will then give me this overlay where it is the same image, where half of it is edited and half of it is not. And then clicking it again will have the same effect except just on the top and the bottom. And again, once more, where the before and after are split horizontally rather than vertically. And so this last trick involves creating a mask based off of color or a color range mask. Let's say in this photo, I want to create a mask targeting some of the earth tones and then also some of the shrubs in the landscapes based off of the color. Well, if I open up my masking panel here, and go down to range and create a mask based off of color range, 
can go ahead and click on that and then it will give me a little eyedropper. Let's say I first want to target this sagebrush over here. If I go ahead and click on this, it's going to target all of those tones in the photo. And then let's say I also want to include some of these earth tones or these wood tones in this dead tree over here. If I click on that, it's going to give me a completely different selection. So if I want to include both of them quite easily, I can just hold down the shift key. And now you can see the eyedropper has a little plus next to it. And now I can go over to the sagebrush, click, and all of them are selected. Now it looks like in this instance, the sky is also a little bit selected. So I can go ahead and further refine the mask by subtracting the sky from this, going over here. And then I can go ahead and adjust this photo like I wanted to in the first place. Maybe add a little bit of white, or maybe add a little bit of clarity to those earth tones. And there are five features that you probably did not know exist in Adobe Lightroom. Hopefully you were able to learn something from this video. If you have a tip or a trick for how to use Lightroom, I would love to hear about it in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day.